welcome to jasonnewland.com. My name is Jason Newland. This is relaxation hypnosis for stress, anxiety and panic attacks. Please only listen to this when you can safely close your eyes. I haven't made one of these uh, for a little while and I do intend to make them a bit more regularly in the future. If you wish to contact me, just go to my website, there's a contact form, contact details on there. And if you would like to help me in any way, support me, gift me, whatever, uh, there's also information on the website there as well, as well as all of my recordings. Saying that, they're not all on there yet, I'm in the process of doing that, but they will be very shortly. Now, I'm actually going to give this recording a title, or kind of a title. basically breaking the pattern breaking the pattern whatever the pattern is whether it's the pattern of anxiety the pattern of stress the pattern of panic breaking that pattern In the same way that you would, you know, if you break a circuit, an electrical circuit, you know, if you make a little gap, the whole thing stops working because it needs, the current needs to go through. Now, I'm not an electrician, so I know the very basics of that. But the flow needs to go through. Just like if you've got a tap and you've got a hose pipe and you're at the bottom of the garden, nothing can happen if the tap, if the hose falls off the tap, you're not going to be able to water your garden. Not with the hose pipe anyway. Or if the hose pipe is tangled up. And in some ways, if you think about it, there's the old theory of breaking bigger things into smaller chunks, which makes it easier to digest or easier to deal with. So you could have the biggest sausage in the world or just a really big sausage. And you know, or a big burger, or a big uh, veggie burger, or whatever, a big cookie, big massive cookie, you can't eat it as it is. You have to break bits off in order to eat it bit by bit, because it's impossible to swallow whole. And as we're not built like snakes, who can swallow things whole we have to break things down so when it comes to things like stress and anxiety and something that's coming up that's uh, causing worry and concern which is anxiety provoking it could be anything that's going to happen something it could be something that's not even if you told someone else they'd think oh what you want about that's not a big deal but it doesn't matter what they think it's about how you feel does it if it's regardless it doesn't matter if it's if it's traveling on a bus for most people 
that's a trivial thing that is meaningless but for some people it's really not and that's okay to deal with that in a way in the same way as someone might deal with having a major operation and dealing with the anxiety coming up with that situation because I've seen people in different you know having the same very same reaction to completely opposite things and I'll give you an example I saw a lady who needed uh, lung transplants and she had to go into hospital on the uh, I think it was the Tuesday and I saw her on the Saturday and she was told if she didn't go into the hospital to have the tests then she wouldn't be allowed to be on the transplant list because she'd attempted to go into hospital about three times that might not be exact but you know she, on a few occasions they booked her in to have the tests to see whether or not she was compatible whether or not she'd be able to handle the operation physically and all that stuff and she couldn't and you know, the anxiety was stopping her from even putting her foot inside the hospital she couldn't even walk through the front door because of her anxiety and her stress I've seen that same reaction with somebody who couldn't get onto a bus I've seen that same reaction with somebody when it comes to a balloon like a phobia of a balloon uh, the anxiety in case they might see a balloon so it's really easy as humans to mock that you know especially if it's if there's something that's not affecting us and I'm not an angel I've probably made fun of lots of things over the years I like to make fun of myself more than anything else but the reality is it's like wow it doesn't make sense it doesn't logically make sense but it doesn't have to if we rely on everything to make logical sense then we're going to be waiting a long long time because emotions always win over logic and facts facts and logic cannot compete with emotion so that's where we have to change it have to sort of find a way into that emotion and of course facts are in here it's useful because it can change the way that you think about something which then changes the way you feel but ultimately it's about changing the way you feel and that's the task it's always the task whether it's a phobia, whether it's trauma, whether it's pretty much anything, any kind of issue in someone's life, even a physical thing like chronic pain, and I'm not talking about the physical feeling, but the emotion behind it because one person could have a damaged ankle and for them it could seem like the end of the world emotionally and they might not even be in huge pain you know their level of pain may be maybe a 4 out of a 10 but emotionally the pain is way higher which means the physical pain feels way higher 
someone else might be lying in bed with a broken back but have a different attitude so in a worse physical condition and it's not about thinking that someone is all someone worse off than you and we shouldn't feel this way because we're allowed to feel however we feel but the point is that we have the opportunity to feel differently emotionally about things because if one person can do it it means it's possible that's how I see it if one person can do it it means it's possible to do now I'm not talking about a physical activity not everybody can you know swim the channel it's something that I would never attempt swimming isn't my thing and I'd have to take swimming lessons just to to swim you know I really I'm not a swimmer swim the channel I would never attempt it never want to never would but I'm not anxious about it I just I'm not going to do it because I don't want to but I know it's possible for a lot of people to do it I know it's a possibility to be done because thousands of people have done it thousands of people have run marathons that's another thing that I kind of have crossed off a list of things that I'm never going to do because I don't want to but there's things emotionally that perhaps we all can do that's not based on a physical ability not based on physical strength or physical stamina or having a you know a really good heart that means you can do lots of like cardiovascular running and swimming and you know all that stuff so even if someone's in a in a wheelchair or it's got asthma or is physically unable to do those kinds of things emotionally I think it's kind of an equal very uh, equal field for all of us or most of us more so than physically physically it's only you know it's, there's a small percentage of the population are ever going to be a professional boxer there's a small population of the human race that are ever going to win a marathon or ever going to be you know a tennis grand slam champion you know apparently there's been about 2,000 world champions boxers in the world in history 2000 that's what I heard recently out of how many billions of people I like boxing so I'm an armchair boxer that's me but emotionally most of us have got the ability we can all imagine running a marathon in our minds we can imagine swimming across the ocean and reaching the next land wherever it might be in my case it would be from here to France in your case it might be from who knows wherever you live in but in our minds and that's the thing in your mind there the only limitations are what you allow there to be physically we have physical limitations of course we do I can't 
I struggle. Well, I can't. I can't touch the ceiling. I'm not tall enough to touch the ceiling without standing on something. And nothing in the world, unless I jump up and down, of course, or wear high heel shoes, which really don't suit me. I'm not going to be able to touch the ceiling unless I grow my fingernails really long or even on tiptoes I can't so that's just a physical thing I can't get into 20 22 inch jeans waist jeans well, I can probably get them up to my knees so we've got our physical limitations which is fine it's just part of being alive and it's good that we're different. We've all got different bodies and different looks and everything. Emotionally, we all have the ability to make changes. We can make changes to our bodies, of course we can. People can lose weight, they can put weight on, put muscle on. I might never be, you know, I might not ever be able to swim the channel. I could become a better swimmer than I am that's guaranteed you can always become better than you are physically if you choose to do that depending on the circumstances of course if someone's in bed and they can't get out of bed of course they're not going to be able to do some of the things that maybe they used to do or they'd like to do but you can think we can all think, we can all have that emotion. We can all connect to the emotions and play with the emotions and change them. And also I think part of it for me is to respect the emotions. So not to mock someone for being scared of getting on a bus, for example. You know, I wouldn't say to someone, "What? Why are you worried about getting on a bus, or why are you worried about going into the supermarket to get your?" There's so many people around. Why are you worried about that? I know somebody that had to, you know, that had anxiety because they needed to had stomach cancer and they needed to have, you know, which ha it happened to me. I had to go and see someone that had stomach cancer in the cancer ward so anxious about what was about to go on with the process and uh, the procedure and I went and I calmed him down and I relaxed him there's no point comparing those two situations because if you say one's logical and one's illogical it makes sense that someone will be nervous in a physical situation where they're about to be prodded and whatever but it doesn't matter that's not the point it matters to the person but I'm saying it doesn't it doesn't it doesn't come into it what comes into it is how you feel not comparing it, how you feel to how someone else feels in a different situation or even a similar situation because if you go into the supermarket, guaranteed you'll see lots of people that are not in the slightest bothered, not even bothered at all about being around all those people. You'll see that. What you won't see is all the people that are bothered. All those people that are in there and are perhaps feeling anxious and just want to get their shopping paid for and want to get out and maybe they haven't left the house for three weeks but they had to go to the supermarket because they've run out of toilet roll and they literally had they've got no food they had to go out but they didn't want to go out maybe the phone credit ran out so they couldn't you know phone for a delivery but you're not going to know that 
even people with smiles on their faces doesn't mean they're happy we all know that anyway deep inside we know but we get self-absorbed I know I do so that's another thing to remember you're not the only one if you're sitting on a train that has hundreds of people on there regardless of what's going on in your life there's probably someone else on that train that's having a similar similar experience if you split up with someone with your partner very likely there's someone else on that train that's also just split up with their partner if you're visiting someone who's in hospital very likely there's someone else there that's also doing that if you've got anxiety being on that train there's going to be other people also might even be the train conductor that's coming around checking the tickets it might be the person bringing the food round you know bringing the sandwiches round and they're just pushing themselves through it because they don't know what else to do and the world doesn't stop because of feelings because of emotions life carries on and the world carries on regardless and it can seem quite cruel just like if you've ever been to a funeral and you come back you're walking home and people are walking through the street laughing smiling had a great old time and it's that illogical thing in the mind why don't you know what's happened don't you know I've just buried my grandmother why are you happy why are you smiling there's no logic in that and we know that just emotion isn't it it's emotion so when you see when you see emotion in that sense and that's what this is just feelings whether it's stress, anxiety, panic it's emotion it's emotional feeling as well as a physical feeling of course I'm not denying that because emotions can affect how we physically feel how we physically feel can affect how we emotionally feel because it's all connected it's not separate So how do we interrupt that pattern or break that pattern or crack it or splice it the same way you would if you had a big cookie or let's say your favourite food but it was a big a big thing. I can't, I'm trying to think of something that I quite like those, I think they're called Chelsea buns with icing and a cherry on top. I just want to stuff the whole thing in my mouth because I love it. But they're too big. I can't get them inside my mouth. So, I, you know, I have to eat a bit at a time. Which is generally how we eat, isn't it? We don't just like just pick the plate up and pour it into our mouth. So why should we take on the full extent of an emotional impact, the full extent of the emotions all in one go? So you think about stress and anxiety the same way as you feel. Think about food. We eat, we take a bite, we chew. We don't just stuff it in our mouth. A dog might do that. I've seen dogs that can literally swallow a whole plate of food without even chewing. 
But humans don't do that. Unless it's soup or porridge you could probably get away with. Or ice cream. But generally, you know, food, you take bites, you chew. You, you, you know, you, you basically, you take your time, you work your way through it. So if you start to look at the anxiety and the stress, start to look at it in that way, just a different way to look at it. I start to realise that actually you don't have to consume this. You don't have to experience it all at the same time. There isn't a rule book for this. Find me a book, a rule book where it says that you must experience all of the stress all in one big go. So it's overwhelming. Show me the rule book for that. And I'll take back what I said. If you can find a rule book that says that's how it's supposed to be. Now going back to boxing, you know how, I know you might not be a fan of boxing, I don't care. I'm just going to use it as an, an, an analogy. When boxing first started, the rules were simple. Two men stood there. That's how it started with men. I know women box now, but at the time it was just men, uh, for whatever reason. Two men stood and they took turns punching each other. Okay? I and mean, that, that is taking it all in one go. That is taking it literally on the chin. Taking everything all at once. And if the person was still standing, basically whoever was still able to stand was the winner. So I guess they'd, if they got knocked down, they'd get up. And eventually if they couldn't get up anymore, that would be the winner. That was taking it all all at once that's trying to eat everything without chewing okay then one day this is the story I'm not sure if it's true or not don't care I just like the story because it fits quite well with this one day so these two men ready you know the one on the right is going to take the first punch And the one on the left, when the bloke went to punch, he ducked. And everyone got all like, all up in the air about it. So what is he doing? Why is he ducking? And when he ducked after that, he punched the other man and knocked him out and he didn't have to take a punch and people saw that and they thought that's wrong however that kind of makes more sense why would you just stand there and take a punch when you can just step to one side or move your head take a step back doesn't take much to avoid a punch if you know it's coming it's the ones you don't know are coming it's, that's the ones you've got to worry about if you know a punch is coming you can avoid it and that's what he did he avoided it he moved to his left so the punch missed him moved his head back and then he punched the other one And the other man wasn't ready for it because he didn't know it was going to happen. Took it by surprise, which you can take the anxiety by surprise, the stress by surprise, the panic by surprise, by deciding just to swerve a little bit, just to move. So wait a minute, I don't actually have to stand here and take this. And 
decide that you're in no one's emotional punch bag, especially not your own, why would you allow yourself to hurt yourself? That's why, you know, with things like internal dialogue, and we've all got it, we've all say things about ourselves and put ourselves down at times. Some people do it a lot, like a lot, lot. And guaranteed that if they had someone walking around with them saying that stuff to them all day long they would put a stop to it eventually yet when it's inside it seems to be okay it's alright for us to do it to ourselves but it's not it's really not and it is a it's a form of self harm So when you know that you can just step back a little bit, interrupt that pattern, that connection, you know the connection, the, the electrical current, just interrupt it. And it gets confused. It's like, wait a minute, why aren't you just standing there letting me punch you? because I'm using a brain mate I'm moving out of the way I'm not your punch bag I'm not your slave I won't be a slave to those feelings anymore those feelings of just horrible feelings of what word can you give them yeah you can use the word stress and anxiety and panic but there's a lot of words you can use and those words are personal to you I've got words and most of them are swear words to be fair because it's horrible it's almost like it's it's just yeah it's having anxiety having panic attacks is for me one of the worst things I've ever been through in my life when it was really really full on the worst worst time of my life as an adult worse than any I've been through severe depression uh, as well as bipolar which I've got bipolar uh, personality disorder and all that stuff but the panic that anxiety attacks they were off a different level of uh, emotional torment and there's something about I didn't have anybody to talk to me I didn't have anybody to assure me reassure me and keep reassuring me and keep telling me maybe the same thing but in different ways that you're going to be okay that you are going to get through it and that you don't have to go back so if you're getting through it or you've got through it you don't have to go back to that. To have someone to tell you genuinely that you're going to be okay. This is temporary. And temporary doesn't have to mean, you know, five minutes. Temporary can, can mean however long it takes, but it's temporary. It's still temporary. I think what I needed 
back in 2000 and what, November 2002 onwards was to hear somebody tell me that it's going to be okay not just because they're my friend or because they're my someone who loves me because that, that they're going to say that and it's it's lovely to have that but sometimes i never didn't f- didn't feel like it meant anything because i didn't understand what i was going through and of course no one's going to really understand what you're going through because you're 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 unique we're all unique we're all individuals we all experience things differently because sometimes I feel it can help to have somebody just tell you over and over again that you're going to be okay, that you're going to get through it. That in itself is an interruption. That in itself is breaking the pattern because it's the opposite to what perhaps we may say to ourselves it's completely the opposite to what I used to say to myself all I used to think about was when the next one was going to happen I practically hypnotised myself to expect it to happen and that really wasn't useful And even at that time, I, I've been studying hypnosis for four or five years and therapy and stuff. So I wasn't even able to see clearly what was going on with me because I didn't understand it just didn't under really didn't understand it it did not make sense to me I had a good job I was one of the top people in my job and technically things are pretty good and then this stuff happened and I was like why doesn't make sense but it doesn't have to make sense. If we rely on logic and facts, then we're just going to be fighting and losing battle because emotions are more powerful. So that's where we need to start with the emotions. Get yourself emotionally involved. Don't worry about the facts. Don't worry about what you can if you want, but you know, how the body works and how the the mind works and this and that. It's all useful stuff, but it's the emotions. And I even talk about that stuff. I did a recording where I talked about things that help. You know, cutting down on coffee, cutting down on alcohol, you know different therapies that you can use anything that helps helps that's the bottom line it's the emotions you're dealing with emotions so when you've got that emotion it's like you're attacking yourself and when you realise wait a minute no that's no and it's not about it being illogical which of course it is illogical to attack yourself it's about the emotions around it when you realise no emotionally it's not on emotionally you make that decision that you're going to make those changes 
and you're going to start stepping back, stepping to the side when that feeling arrives. And realize it's your feeling. It can't hurt you. It can't hurt you. It's just the feeling. There's loads of ways you can interrupt it, but one of the best ways is by thinking. But getting emotionally involved in that thinking realizing that you know what you want something better for yourself you deserve better for yourself you deserve to be happy you deserve to feel relaxed you know what it feels to feel relaxed you've been relaxed many times we all have you know what it feels like to feel completely completely relaxed so it's not an alien emotion it's something that we're all born to be able to do babies can relax really easily babies can fall asleep really really easily So we have that inbuilt. So it's about the emotions. It's about it's about thinking about it in that way. Perhaps deciding that you deserve better from yourself. You deserve to be treated better, with more respect by yourself, from yourself, to yourself. You deserve to feel relaxed. And the more you hear this, the more it sinks in. Which is why I make so many recordings. Perhaps saying the same thing over and over again in different ways. So that it sinks in from different angles. Instead of just making one recording. Because I feel that's how our minds work because you're going to listen with different moods it'd be a different mood listening to this than maybe you were listening to the last recording and you might listen to this recording next week and it feels different and something changes or maybe something changes instantly there's always changes going on we're affected by what we hear that's something that's really really important to remember we are affected by what we hear we're affected by what we see we it's it's impossible not to be i don't mean necessarily everything you see is going to change your life forever of course not but we're affected even if it's just in a very slight way so when something's important to you and you purposely like for this press the play button on this podcast you purposely listen with an intention with an openness to experience and to welcome those changes into yourself 
inside yourself, in your life, in your mind, in your body, then that's when those changes naturally occur. Because you're open to them. And the more you listen, the more benefit you gain. Which is why I'm going to continue making these recordings. Because I think, although I've not met you, maybe one day I will, but I believe that you deserve to be happy. You deserve to be able to feel relaxed and to enjoy your life doing the things that you love doing, being with the people that you love being with and being able to enjoy it without the the ball and chain of anxiety or panic or stress. Being able to be free free in your mind so I'm going to end this recording now and I'm going to speak to you very soon so thank you for listening and remember to be kind to yourself lots of love